So this is one thing we can learn from this von Neumann analysis is that if we solve the ODE exactly, is the discretization stable or not? Here, the answer is yes. The discretization is stable if I can solve the ODE exactly. The second question, which is now less trivial for this particular equation, is that what kind of ODE solver do we need to use for the solution to be stable? Right. Remember last time we used uh, explicit Euler time integration and the solution turns out to be unstable unless you use a very small delta t. Right. The answer for why we have to use a very small time step and why explicit schemes are not a very good choice for this equation can also be seen from exactly this factor from the von Neumann stability analysis. So, uh, how many people have studied numerical methods for integrating ODEs? Over half. Okay, so let me have a very quick review of, of that. So, if you are solving uh, ODE du dt equal to A of u, so A is just uh, any arbitrary matrix, what determines the behavior of a particular ODE solver are two things. Okay, two things, two factors decides the stability property of ODE solver. Okay, uh, the number one is the eigenvalues of A. So where are the eigenvalues of A lies? All right. Uh, let me just uh, make a, a lot more simplified case. Let me just uh, think of uh, you have a scalar ODE, just a du dt equal to lambda u. U is a, one, a single number. A lambda is a single number. So, so 1 is the value, is actually the value of lambda, not even the, uh, the, 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 OK. 1 is the value of lambda times the delta t, where delta t is the time step size you are using. So lambda times delta t is the first value you should look at in looking at the stability. And 2 is the stability region of the ODE solver. Okay, so stability region is a region in the complex plane. And the complex plane is the complex plane for lambda times delta t. So this is the real of lambda times delta t. This is the imaginary part of lambda times delta t. And for example, forward Euler is stable in this region. So this region is the region for which forward Euler is stable. OK. And uh, as another example, what is the region for which an exact ODE solver, let's say we have an imaginary ODE solver that is exactly solves the equation. Where is the region where the exact ODE solver is stable? Huh? The left part of the entire complex plane, exactly. So the whole left plane would be uh, the, the, the stability region of an exact solver. So what this tells me is that if I have a factor like this, uh, let's say this factor is my lambda k. So this factor is my lambda k. What I'm actually solving is du. Uh, so if I if I if my u hat is a sinusoidal function of wave number k, what I'm solving is du hat of i dt is equal to lambda k times u hat of i, right? So because if we substitute this into that equation, we get, uh, or, or that equation, it doesn't matter. Uh, what we get is uh, du hat of i dt equal to lambda k times u hat of i. So we have exactly this kind of uh, uh, ODE to solve. And uh, the stability region is going to be determined by this particular lambda k times delta t. And this particular uh, 
this particular lambda k is equal to 2 times cosine k minus 1 divided by delta x squared times delta t where k goes from minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1 so that's the range of the discrete Fourier series so what do you think is going to decide your worst lambda if you are using forward order where does where do these uh, lambda case lie for each k there is a different lambda k right where are they for k equal to 0 I know my lambda k is here for k equal to 1 it's slightly negative right so so if we draw this function k as a function of cosine k minus 1 let's multiply that by 2 I have 0 and uh, a cosine minus 1 is a function that goes like that right and uh, here is a uh, uh, Oh, actually my k also needs to go negative so it goes like this and uh, uh, do, 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 do. I think I have forgotten a factor of uh, probably pi somewhere uh, so let me see e to the i j k so, so for the Fourier series to be Okay, so, so what I need is when k is equal to 1, the e to the j i k has to be a complete uh, sign function over the whole domain, right? So here, my i has to go from 0 to n. So i goes from 0 to n. So I need to actually divide this by n and uh, multiply that by 2 pi. So I have a factor of 2 pi over n. I forgot uh, over the discrete Fourier series, right? Sorry for that. Uh, and uh, that actually carries over to uh, later stages. So I have a factor of 2 pi over n here, 2 pi over n here, and uh, 2 pi over n here. So I have a 2 pi, uh, 2 pi over n here, and this needs to be multiplied just by 2 pi. Uh, no, 2 pi over n also. And here it's k times 2 pi over n. And uh, what else? Uh, here is k times 2 pi over n. Anything else I'm missing this 2 pi over n factor? Right. Okay. So here, k times 2 pi over n minus 1. All right. Okay. Um, let's look at this factor of uh, 2 times cosine k times 2 pi over a minus 1 so as k go from minus n over 2 to n over 2 what happens is that uh, uh, let me see what this if k goes to n over 2 then we have a cosine of pi right so the n cancels with the n here, the 2 would cancel with the 2 in the 2 pi. We get a cosine of pi. That is going to be minus 1 and uh, we have minus 2. So, so this goes all the way to minus 4. And it also goes all the, all the way to minus 4 uh, over negative of n over 2 because cosine is an uh, even function. Right? So what we have is, for the bigger case, the value lambda k is going to be successively more negative, lying in this complex domain. And whether the for the for the worst k, which is equal to minus n over two, 
is the lambda k going lambda k times delta t going to go beyond the stability region of forward order? Is going to be decided by oh by the way for forward order the stability region is centered at minus one and the limit is at minus two. So the the criterion is whether this lambda k times delta t, which have a, a most negative value of minus four times delta t over delta x squared. So minus four times delta t over delta x squared. Is this going to be less than minus two or not? If it is actually less, we have an unstable scheme. If it is, if for every k the lambda k times delta t is within the stability region of forward order, then we have a stable scheme. Okay, or if we write it again, the criterion is if we divide both sides by minus four and uh, the inequality is reversed, uh, is actually right. Uh, so, so the instability criterion uh, would be. In unstable. So, so if this point exceeds minus two, it'll be unstable. So the instability criterion is delta t over delta x greater than half, or delta t has to be. Uh, so, so this would be unstable, right? So, if I want the scheme to be stable, delta t has to be less or equal to half of delta x square. In order for us to be stable using forward order time integrator, it has to be in the forward order region. In order for this exact ODS solver to be stable, we can be anywhere in the negative side. There are also other OD integrators like uh, for example, MATLAB uh, OD45 uses uh, a mixture of a fourth order and fifth order Runge Kata integrator. The stability region for that is like is like something like this, right? So uh, it's symmetric with respect to the real axis, but it also ends somewhere on the real axis. So you can use slightly larger time steps than forward order, but it's still finite, and it still goes. It's still the time step limit still goes to the square of delta x. So that's actually why when we take n to be a thousand decrease delta x to be further smaller in the last lecture, we expect the time step size to have to decrease by a factor of a hundred. That's why it takes so long. Okay, question? So since we're talking about the confusion equation here, shouldn't there be the coefficient as well in the criteria? Oh yes. Uh, I think I have forgotten about the coefficient here also. Yeah, thank you. So so here, uh, here's the lambda k. Actually, we need to also multiply that uh, by. So so we also need to multiply all of this by kappa, right? So kappa is going to be involved in this lambda k because uh, uh, du dt is equal to kappa times the finite difference operator. Uh, thank you. So, so we have a factor of kappa here, and uh, uh, we have k goes from here, right? So everything is going to be multiplied by kappa. So here is minus four times kappa, and uh, um, so here would be kappa times delta t, and kappa times delta t has to be less than that. Right. So, so also the bigger the uh, Diffusion coefficient is the smaller delta t has to be, right? Yeah. Any any other questions about this? So going through the Newman stability analysis, one is going to tell us if the spatial discretization is unstable or is stable, right? So if just the spatial discretization gives you unstable solution. That means even if your OD integrator, even if your time discretization is exact, you will have an unstable solution. Now the second uh, thing it informs you is that what kind of time integrator should you choose and what is the time step size limit 